But uh, at this point, I would like to open the floor again to our full array of presenters. So any questions, feedback? Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> this was interesting last time. That's me again. Well, I wish I have a question. You're surprised, huh? What do you think of cryptocurrency and future of cryptocurrency? Well, that's a great question, and it's a very tough topic. It, it, it could get me in trouble, too, so I'm going to be very careful what I'm going to say. But it, sh sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, like I said, cryptocurrency is a very tricky field. It's definitely a hot topic nowadays, and a lot of people talk about it. You know, There are kind of two groups of people, one who believe in it and the other who don't. Uh, overall, banks and the financial industry in general are not being such a such a big fan of this because especially for the banks it's being a big competition and they're not liking that at all so they're trying to uh, not allow cryptocurrency to become a global currency and being used uh, by almost everyone in the world i definitely think it has a value but at this point i still didn't completely buy into it and you know in the positions that I have held in the past, you know, we were not exactly always being allowed to, you know, recommend this or or promote this. So I'm pr pretty careful what I'm saying about it. That's why I'm keeping it so brief and, you know, not trying to um, express, you know, too much detailed opinion on one or the other side. Thank you for the question. I see a question in right here. Uh, maybe could the two financial analysts sing a song together? <laughs> or, or maybe one-on-one -on -one basketball? <laughs> Another question in the back I saw. I actually read Vlada's book, Ciao. <laughs> and uh, it's absolutely amazing. I recommend it to everyone. I cried, I laughed, I uh, was uh, reading it with my jaws dropped. Thank you for dropping names. I think that's very important for people who survived communism. Uh, and I would really like to know, because I read a very similar book, uh, by, written uh, not by Yurai Kukura, but about, I know most of you probably know who Yurai Kukura is. He was a humongous uh, movie and uh, acting star in Czechoslovakia before he defected. And then he became a huge star in Germany uh, and uh, had very similar kind of parallel experiences. What I'm interested in is when you came back after 89 or whenever it was that you came back, what was your experience like uh, with the way, uh, with the reception of you? Because I know that Kukura, he, he had a theater, he tried to do stuff, and most of his contemporaries were almost against him. Like, it, they were not supporting him in any way. They, they were almost, I'm not sure how to say it, but how was your experience coming back in the freedom times? Like freedom times, like... Because when I came back, uh, I came back when my father passed away. And he passed away Monday, and I came actually to Vienna when they were knocking down the Berlin Wall. So like, wow. So it took like three weeks, four weeks, till everything came to Slovakia, Czechoslovakia. So nobody knew anything. So when I came there, I said, hey, after 10 years, I'll come back, and everything's falling apart. <laughs> but what happened, I don't know how, but uh, I was arranging a funeral for my dad. They gave me three days visa. So fortunately, my father knew the uh, police captain, so I went down and he extended for a week. I tried to bury uh, over there for a week, so you have to pay everybody, you know? They just, oh, wait, two weeks, three weeks, just no, Wednesday. So uh, we made it, but strangest thing was that we went to Zeleny Domus, to like a, a restaurant in Korza in Bratislava. Suddenly, a rash comes, See, running into a restaurant. It's, I was like, fear that I came back <laughs> yeah, from Elan, you know? And I said, no, 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 just leave me alone. And that's, the waitress 
said, can I have your actor autograph? And she said, of course. He said, of course. And he, she said, not with you, him. <laughs> <laughs> so we can forget it. I told Yoshko, relax. You know, that's because we, we left and then we opened up the door for a lot of people uh, because they got afraid that, uh, you know, the in the 80s band started happening, Tubla Tanka and all that. So because they, they were afraid that somebody else, because my whole band defected. And the two, two sound men and a manager, everybody, except one guy. If his wife was pregnant, he couldn't do it. But everybody was gone. So um, my reception was that the first, first time, nobody knew what's happening. So I went back, and uh, they called me in 92. And they tried to like kiss my butt, because they, they, they wouldn't let me have a, re a record, because the uh, record company executive you know, was making fun of him. So he said, well, he's alive, I will never have a record. So they tried to uh, make amends, so they called me back to record the album. They gave me studio times, like 11 days. By the time I got there, it was like six days. So I did all the songs they want me to do during the day, and at night I was doing my American album. <laughs> Just, but but uh, you know how it was the reception when I left? Suddenly nobody was calling. Nobody, everybody's afraid. And uh, when wall fell down, everybody was my friend again. So I don't forget. So uh, that's how it was. I mean, it, it's still the same. Nothing has changed. You know, you think it's changed? No, nothing has changed. It's in the, the envy, the jealous, envious, and they, they just, just, that's horrible. That's why I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question for, for M, who, who presented uh, like lots of struggles, which Czech language has, but do you have any tips, like which you maybe recommend to people, some concrete examples from Czech, something you, you sort of, yeah, I don't see you right now. Is, is M here? Oh, sure. Okay, <laughs> so I'll ask her privately. Okay. Or if <laughs> That's too bad. Uh, another question, hopefully for someone who's still here. I see Petra quite clearly, so yes, she's still here. I believe that in the last two years, we all may have uh, experienced trauma. And I do have my little musical exercise in the morning to, you know, recalibrate and uh, shut off the news and, you know, like shut off the emails and whatever else. But what do you do to keep positive and what do you tell people that are traumatized by all of this? Oh, my goodness. Uh, what do I do? Um, so th this is, this is going to get me like dis, un decertified. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't really end up using music myself. And the, the reason for that is, I mean, I do a lot of it at work and I have three kids and they all are sort of constantly like making or playing music. So it's just like, that's my soundtrack. Um, but I, like, I sing a lot. I mean, I, I, I do. And I mean, I, I would say that that's, that's a major thing. If you are able to sing, it's such a great regulator of the breath. Um, and the, the biggest trick that you can do for your nervous system that you can just do on a daily basis is to regulate your breath. And so the, the trick is really, you've probably heard this, but like you inhale on a count of, let's say four, you exhale on a count of eight or longer, right? And I even make it longer. So we can all do it, just go like. <sighs> yeah, anyway, so that's really, it's not gonna fix your trauma. Um, you know, I, I could turn this into a group therapy session, but, um, I would say, you know, any kind of expressive, right. You have to, and again, this is a culture bound thing. So in the kind of Euro American tradition, and I'm never quite sure how much I subscribe to this, but in, in this tradition of psychotherapy, the idea is that the only get the only way to you know, deal with the feeling is to get through it, right? And so, so you process it. Like today I had a group and we all just named like the, the feelings that we are feeling with this pandemic and this particular moment in it. And people said frustration and fatigue and exhaustion and just you know, got it all out there. And ultimately we talked about grief, right? And people didn't name that until I named it for them. Um, so that's, that's partly it, you know, and if, if you're songwriting or if you're journaling, if you make art, if you take weird photographs, you know, um, 
Yeah, that's 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 all I can say, and I think the time that I should have allowed it, allowed it for this. Thank you for the question. I see a question here. I have a question for Michal Benesh. You had a perfect prediction of what to do or what will happen when we will do certain steps. Uh, you play with COVID a lot. Uh, what is your prediction when this will end? <laughs> well, things were, things were much easier to predict like a year ago. Now uh, it got much more complicated. It, it will suck. That's my prediction. It will suck. Uh, Look, I, I don't know, you know, I don't have prediction, but I became kind of like very sad about uh, the fact that, you know, we people cannot even agree on some basics. You know, I, I do see that there can be some different opinions about some things, but, you know, at least like the mathematics should be some common language. And this was like one of my topics, you know, and that's why, why, why I was involved in this game. Like, let's figure out how to bridge these gaps into society where people would disagree. Right? I don't know this wasn't much answer. I, you know, I, uh, I think like personally, you can protect yourself if uh, you get vaccinated and you follow some rules. And uh, you know, for the rest of the society who don't want to follow those rules, it will suck. Yeah. And it will suck for everybody else as well. But you know, this is not. You know, I, I became kind of scared by this at the beginning. It turned out that the pandemic was way better than it could have been. Like the next one will suck even more. I'm sorry, I don't want to end on that bad note, but... <laughs> <laughs> so we will get out of this one, but let's prepare for the next one. Yeah. Another question for, or comment for any of our speakers? Um, I think M is back, right? Uh, so, so I would like to echo um, Viera's question, which which was that we uh, would love some practical tips on. I mean, I I don't know what Viera was asking. Maybe you can re-ask your question. But but I just like in check. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I'm gonna like want to come say hi to you afterwards. So like, what is one practical way that I can address you that's respectful of your identity? I mean, this is inherently hard in check, right? So, but. So one thing that has been nice is just rephrase, like I think the best way to do it is to reframe sentences to avoid gendered structures, right? But that's so hard and impossible in Czech. But like sometimes, yeah, <laughs> Chris is shaking his head. I was, I was just gonna say, if it's in the past tense, like try, you know, like sometimes I could shift it and be like, just say it in, um, tak jsme šli do restaurace a servírka říká tohle a my říkáme tohle. You can, you can kind of play with it a little bit, you know, like once you make the setting clear um, that it's that you're in the past and then you can tell the story in present tense. That can work. Other things that I, I use, and this is hard and actually a funny story. So like going, you know, this summer, this past summer, I got to go home and visit my family and it was my first time um, being back in the Czech Republic since I was out to more than just like a couple of my close friends. And so I like, I like really mentally prepared hard for this and it was so stressful, but I really try to be like, think of like common things. Like instead of saying, Rada tě zase vidím, I would say something like, mám radost, že se zase vidíme. But somehow, um, yeah, but one of the things, but what happened is I, I was coming up to my cousin and somehow, I think in my head, I just wanted to say like, it's, I'm pleased to see you again, but somehow I said těšímně to my cousin that I've known for my entire life. <laughs> A pravděpodobně jsem uh, chtěl říct těšímně, že se zase vidíme, ale nějak to vypadlo a říkám jenom těšímně. You know, I, things happen, we're all, we're all just human. I, I think in Czech for me, the more important thing is that the person like knows and tries. Um, then like I actually, I haven't even gotten to that. I use um, 
on a daily in my daily life I use the masculine in in the Czech language just because it's I like that it queers me like it's not what people expect therefore it marks me for my queerness and that's what I really want and it's also really easy to use like people know how to use the masculine you know like it's I know some people in the trans community who live in the Czech Republic who are like coming up with a whole new language structure and patirot and all these things which like is incredible, but as a someone, as a trans person living in the US, like it's incredibly hard to get people to use the singular. They like, people will go arm trigger marry and all on you. And, but it's like, you know, nobody says, oh no, somebody forgot his or her wallet. I hope he or she comes back for it. Like nobody talks like that. Come on now. We all know how to use the singular they. It predates the singular you in fact. I, I can't. So like, you know, knowing how, or how hard it is to get people to change to use some people's new names for people who change their names as part of their social transition. So seeing people come up with an entire new language structure like Patirot, I'm like, I love that you're doing it, but I don't know that this is the way. I don't know that it's like feasible to get enough people on board for that to be a practicable thing. So I feel like I've been talking a lot and I don't know if I'm answering your question at all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks, Anne. I think we got a good sense of how complicated it is. <laughs> Anyone else with a question? Well, up, oh, up. Oh. I have a question for Martina Foreman. Oh, first of all, when is when is your next uh, comedy appearance? Comedy club appearance, and when are you going to publish something in English? <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for asking. I actually mm, perform randomly because I'm most of the time in Connecticut, and I still consider myself more writer than anything else. And and stand up, it's really a hobby for me. So since I'm, I have family coming, and then. I'll be away for most of uh, January, so I scheduled everything after, and I promise to let you know. Okay, you let us know, yes? <laughs> okay. We all come. All right, yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> now, and um, the English translation, it's, uh, I've spent so much time actually translating the book about, um, about Paulina and Anna and uh, Iri Boriska's family, um, into English and I got almost there. I have an agent and we, we um, actually um, got few publishers interested, but they were all like, you can tell like it's not her first language. And don't get, don't get me wrong, I got a lot of help with whatever was already there, you know, so. So, and um, anyway, and that book was actually bought by Danish production company to turn it into like a limited series, but then COVID and nothing is happening. I don't know. I just like, honestly, it's writing, talking, sharing things. It's such a joy for me. And then when it comes to the hard part, like having meetings, with, like I'm the worst person to pitch a project. If, if I would, if my writing or publishing was depending on pitching my project, like I swear, like, you, you know, I, I would not have a published like anything, like a, you know, piece of paper this gentleman is sitting on. So anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just tried to enjoy it in the right, and we'll see what happens. But thank you so much I for one asking. More, one more. Uh, if, uh, let's say, you, you have a great sense of humor, right? And in, in Czech, of course, it comes in Czech. How difficult do you find it to be funny in English? I mean, not difficult, but... I mean, it's hard say, in Czech, too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now, um, I don't know. Well, I live here long enough to know that some of my stories, if you know, if you keep telling the same story and then you know where people, like, laugh or where they get more, you know, amused by what you're saying, so you eventually try to cut out the other pieces. But, but that's only with the stand-up. That's only one part of, like, the whole thing because there is also the personal presentation, the way, and I have days I can tell, like when I'm sort of more alive and like attuned to the audience and I want them to suck in and I want to entertain them. And days when I like try to go, 
you know, on stage and you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna suck. And they, <laughs> they know it, they know it. I didn't even reach the stage and they know I'm gonna suck, you know, so. No, so you're anyway. great, you're great. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I see one in the back. <laughs> I just, I have a question for Camilla. Uh, we, we, is she still here? Uh, yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, my question is, I, I really like your paintings, even just from what I saw here. And I noticed in your bio, you mentioned like a lot of inspiration goes back to your childhood in Czechoslovakia and repeating patterns and folklore. Do you think that would happen if you stay there or you really think this is something sort of uh, inspired or even caused by your family leaving when you were young? That's a really good question. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't think that it would happen if I stayed there because if I stayed there, it would just be something that I would notice. Like I would just walk past it and not even think about it. Like now I go back and I see you know a painted doorway and I go, oh my god, I'll take too many pictures of it and draw it and or like I notice things that I miss here. I think it's more about. The things that, because I was 17 when I came, so I had m most of my childhood there. So the things that I missed when I moved are the things that I noticed when I get back. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. probably, no, I wouldn't probably do it. No. Yeah. I probably wouldn't even paint if I was there. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm asking because also after being here for several years, I started to suddenly like... Uh, you know, you know, listen to Yoshka Cherny folk songs because my father used to sing them, and I don't think I would do that if I stayed there. I started to admire folk art, and you know, we yeah, had yeah. some some artists here. And I'm not an artist myself, but I really the f there's something why you now start to like feel more attracted to it than if you just stay there. It's called nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> so it's and I can see that nostalgia in your paintings, and it's beautiful. It, so. it is. It's nostalgia. Thank you. Third time luckier. I know you hate me. Uh, a question for Vlado. We know each other well. And one time he told me when he was starting his young musician career all, all over the Europe, he ran out of the song, so he starts singing the dinner menu. <laughs> Knowing your capabilities, if I open Martina's Nalakuito uh, Narujovo, page, just just the beginning. Can you play for us instrumental Namaluito <laughs> Narujovo? Well, uh, no, 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 it's okay. I live in LA, I used to write while I waited, so I can't see anything, so I can sing anything I want, <laughs> really. All right. Jak to, że łzie dewiet, gdy ziasem tak był straszny, nie ospala. Nie własne, wczera o sednem starać. I can sing. You know, that's horrible. I don't have glasses, you know. I'm an old man. To jsem se nemohla ovládnout. Na skrečo. A je to tak. Tak. 
Thank you, thank you. All right. Let's have a reception. Okay. <laughs>